Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of Watts Collection. Uh, today what I'd like to do is see if we can find any bargains that came out with the, the finalists in the Grand Prix, the Grand Prix de Orlogy de Genève. And uh, what I was looking for is that sort of starting at the lowest price we could find, uh, but keeping things under 10,000, usually a lot under 10,000, even under 5,000. And, you know, looking for something that was unusual and be unique to have uh, before the finals come up uh, on November 7th. Anyway, now, this one, the one I'd like to start with is called the Gorilla Fastback Drift. And Gorilla was a company started by a couple guys from uh, Audemars Piguet. And the one of the reasons I like this is that I'm a big fan of the a similar one, but a somewhat more expensive one, uh, by H. Moser. And uh, theirs is called the Flying Hours, and this one is called the Wandering Hours. Um, Audemars Piguet has one that's called the Star Wheel. Uh, Eurek has one, Arnold and Son has one, they're, they're pretty much all the same. There was this one, uh, when somebody uh, saw this, it was one of these snotty remarks that is usually made, well I hope that Audemars Piguet is, you know, and they're happy that you, basically they were saying they stole the idea. Thing was, was that first of all, it's not, not, <laughs> it's not always a good idea to be snark, uh, snarky or snotty, because, uh, especially when you're wrong, you look like a jerk to begin with, and you look like a bigger jerk. Uh, what this it really came from was, was really interesting. It was from uh, this clock that was made in 1671. And uh, what they had, they had the, the hours move, and behind it they had a light, probably a candle or maybe a gas light. I don't know if they had gas light back then. But uh, so that the so it could be seen at night. There was a, this was in um, one of the uh, British uh, museums that this came up. So anyway, <laughs> it's, it's I don't know whoever made that and back in the uh, uh, 17th century, but uh, it certainly was not a Marpigue. Now the Gorilla Fastback. Uh, it's called the Fastback Drift. They had a similar one last year, and. And this is sort of an interesting one. On the front, it has a uh, washer manufacturer, which is like, oh boy, there's a washer moving in it. Well, not exactly. Uh, washer has uh, some kind of, there's a gorilla uh, patent or something on the, uh, on the one, what they call the wandering hours. And uh, that, I think, was made by washer, and then they put it on top of an ETA 2824. But uh, nevertheless, it's still a very uh, interesting watch for, it's not quite $3,000. And uh, so that's, that was the first one. And, and also too, it's, it's one I happen to like. The second, uh, this is from the, um, the challenge group. The, the second group is, uh, you have the lowest price ones. The Doxus Sub 200 is uh, $908. And uh, it it runs on an ETA movement, and but you know ETA movements around that price is not not too unreasonable. The fact that they made it through the second level, I mean, you know, here you have a finalist in the Grand Prix. Uh, you know, that's not a th th that's something. I mean, the judges looked at these. I don't know how many they had, but <laughs> there were. This was one of the final six. Um, Another one that I happen to really like, and it's a very reasonably priced, it's a little over $2,000, the Seiko Presage Porcelain Dial. Now, that I think is a very cool looking watch, and, um, and it's at a very reasonable price. And of course, uh, being a Seiko, Seiko has a Seiko made movement, Seiko manufactured movement. Now, the next one is called the Sega Design Single Hand Globe. Boy, this one is a cool watch. It's got this little red thing at the top, and the globe turns, and the time go, the time and minute goes around the uh, sort of inside the. I think it's yeah, it's inside the bezel. Um, very interesting watch. Uh, Thirty-two of eleven, 
I think that also has uh, an ETA uh, movement in it as well. The uh, final two from the uh, challenge, um, one is a Ming. Now, Ming is made by, uh, this is out of Singapore, and they've had some very, very interesting designs. And, I, and I've liked theirs a lot. The only thing I, I was a little worried about is that, look at it, this is called the Ming 1706 Copper, and it's 1147 which is you know, a heck of a good price. And, but I thought, you know, looking at it, I, this, is a, this is a watch I'd really like to handle. Uh, on the one hand, it could be a nice, have a decent quality heft to it, or it could be one of these tinny feeling things you have in fashion watches that have a cheap uh, quartz in it. Uh, this one uh, runs on, I forgot what the movement is. It's uh, It runs on an ETA 2824. Now, the Tudor Black Bay uh, PO1, uh, this is uh, for 3440. By the way, all of the watches in the challenge uh, group are under 4,000 uh, Swiss francs. And it's pretty close to a dollar. I think it's a dollar two equal one uh, Swiss franc. So you got a very, very close to each other on that. Now the Tudor uh, Black Bay, in one form or another, has been in a lot of these contests, and they've won a lot too. And this is uh, uh, this one has a, uh, a Tudor manufactured movement in it, and. It's, uh, it's a little like a sort of a, I'm not sure what it is. It, it's a 200 um, meter uh, underwater, so and with official certification. So that's that's just nothing to sneeze at. You know, nice little watch for for that price. Now the next group. Now this group, these are watches that are over 4,000, 4,000 or older, but over but under 10,000. And uh, this used to be go all the way down to nothing, but this is sort of the next level up, and it's a lot harder to find something that's sort of on a bargain level price, but you can find some interesting watches. Uh, to me, the most interesting one in this group is the Kadoki 2, uh, 8872. Now, this is a wholly handmade watch, uh, both the movement and the hands and everything, everything about it's handmade by uh, Stefan Kadoki. And uh, so this one, I, I, I think is, if you, if you like that kind of thing, I do. I like the handmade ones. <laughs> They're trouble with I can't afford them. But here was one that's affordable. It's got a little uh, day-night uh, indicator on it. So that was sort of cool. Now, the one next to it is a Pilot uh, Type 20 uh, Silver. Uh, it's $77.98. Uh, now, this one is sort of one of those big pilot watches that uh, Zenith has. Uh, this one's called Extra Special, so you know it's it's really good. <laughs> it's got that great big uh, crown on there for, for winding. Now, if you're a pilot in an open cockpit, that big crown is, is pretty heavy because you got the gloves on so you can wind it. It's a cool looking watch, and it has a riveted uh, aluminum look to it. Cool watch, $77.98. Of course, it's got a, a Zenith manufactured movement in it as well. Now, uh, the next group that I could find something affordable in is the divers. Uh, now, again, you're, you're, you're up pretty good above uh, what you can find in the challenge group, but you can still find some, some good buys here. Uh, here are three that I like, the Longines Hydro uh, Conquest. Uh, this is 3211. Um, it, it, it's, if you want to, I mean, it, they have all of the long jeans have, they're made by spots. They have the ETA movements or some version of the ETA movements, but they're not bad watches for, I mean, you know, for that price. Uh, now, another one is Seiko Prospect LX line uh, divers. Uh, this one's uh, 3633. And it's day date. It's got a little uh, power reserve indicator down at around uh, eight o'clock, and three hundred meters down. And for a diver, uh, and again with a steel bracelet, desk diver would be my guess. <laughs> I don't know. Now, Ulysse Nardine, 
a couple of years ago, they had this uh, one, you know, I think it was a diver, it was a boatman called the regatta that won uh, the uh, sports watch uh, contest, or one of those categories that's changed since then. And he came back with one called the Ulysse Nadine Great White, and it's got, I think it's got the UN-118, which is a, is a movement manufactured by Ulysse Nardine for 6330. Um, and this one is, is what I sort of like. It's got the little uh, power reserve indicator up at 12 o'clock, and then with a couple subdials down at 6 o'clock. It's interesting looking uh, diver watch. It's, it's a great white, and of course it's, it's in white. Now, the final group that I want to sort of look for, this is a new group called the Iconic. I'm not even sure why they have this category, but they do. And this is a new category that they came up with. And the Iconic, you have something that is, I guess, considered iconic. And in this case, uh, these three particular ones are you know, relatively well-priced. Uh, the Hamilton Hamilton Intramatic Auto Automatic Chronograph is 1972, and uh, that's not the year. That's the price on it, and it's got the uh, those big pushers at uh, two and four o'clock, and the uh, two sub dials at three and nine, and then uh, uh, six at six they have the uh, date on that. Now that one is. Fairly well priced, sort of a cool looking watch. Uh, if you like, you know, if you're into chronographs, of course it's got a, it's a Hamilton version of an ETA movement in it. Uh, probably some version would be my guess of the 770, uh, the Valjoux 770. Now, uh, the Zenicel Primero A38, uh, A384 Revival. Uh, this is a sort of an older version of it. They got the date at uh, uh, down there at four o'clock, five between four and five, and then you have the three sub dials that sort of have the sort of panda bear uh, look to it. Uh, Seventy-two forty-eight. Uh, El Primero is a is a really excellent uh, automatic chronograph movement. I don't know. I, I, if you like that style, if you like sort of more of these iconic style, that's a, that's a good one. Now, to me, the real I, most iconic looking of all of these that's affordable is the Tag Heuer Monaco 80s. Uh, this is 5872. The Monaco, now this has got a caliber 11 in it, and the caliber 11 is if i'm not mistaken it's some might probably a value 770 base to it or uh, built on top of that uh, but i like this one uh, i i like the um the blue and white one and then they have another one i think it's blue white and an orange it's a color of an oil company that i like a lot too on the uh, on this particular on the monaco uh, I, I like this burgundy color as well, though. I think it's, it's sort of a pretty cool looking uh, watch. Now, the thing about all of these watches is that they're the finalists uh, in this contest. Now, the ones I picked out were the ones that were under under 10,000, and usually, like I said, a lot less than that. Uh, from the iconic group, though, there's um, not a huge fan of uh, IWC because they're not exactly forthcoming with their what's in their movements. But uh, that's neither here nor there. They have one in the iconic group that I just love. It's called the Paul Weber, something like that. Whoa, what a cool looking watch! But this thing's like thirty-eight thousand dollars. So I thought I'd better not mention it. Anyway, well, listen, uh, if you haven't taken a look at the what, the, what they call pre-selected watches from the Grand Prix, go to gphg.org and uh, take a look at them, and uh, maybe there's something in there that you'd like to. And, of course, as always, I'd really like to hear your opinion. Uh, there are always going to be watches that I like that didn't get chosen, I think. It was either from the diver, that, or maybe it was from the iconic group. I'm not sure which one, but there was this Doxa, orange Doxa that I just love. <laughs> it looked like a, a Seiko turtle. So something that ran over it and 
flattened it out. Cool looking watch. Of course, it didn't make it. So, anyway, it's it's out of the running now. But uh, it's always fun to take a look at these because these are these are watches that are reviewed by experts. Doesn't mean the most expensive or even the best ones are entered into it, but a lot of them are. And uh, so I, I I tend to like to find watches I never thought of collecting uh, in this group, and I have in the past, uh, including two winners, my Harbring two, and also this is my uh, FP Jorn uh, Chronomet Souvain, which won the men's award back a long time ago. I think it was 2007 or so. Okay, like I said, love to hear your opinion. Go see if you can find some other ones you'd like in the, uh, the pre-selected from the Grand Prix. And I'll see you on Sunday, I hope. We're having a, uh, a I think you're going to find a very interesting uh, collection review. Hope to see you then.